psychologist, psychoanalyst, and author, uh, Dr. Frida Birnbaum. She's also a, um, an expert on depression, women's issues, and obtaining happiness. Uh, she's joining us on the phone, as is our co-host, Vern Casper. Everybody, take it away. Yeah, thank you. My name is Vern. Can I call you Frida? Absolutely. It's okay, good. Well, uh, now you're going to talk to us somewhat about the, the mob mentality, and I, I find that that's a, a fascinating subject in today's world. First of all, do you want to give us some kind of a statement on it, and then we'll we'll start expanding from there. Well, you know, it's sad. If someone sees, they did research on this, uh, the man laying on the sidewalk, and no one helped him till somebody went and bent down and started helping him. Then other people felt more comfortable doing it. Now, it's not necessarily something for a good cause. Rioting is not something that is really very good. It's not very helpful. But that is that mob mentality when there is a leadership kind of agenda and a few people start, the rest will follow because in our society, when someone is a leader, it's not as often as when someone's a follower. So there are more people that will go ahead and join in after, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm losing my voice, after they see somebody who's already doing something. And that's a, a mindset that we all have. We don't want to be seen in a way that is not supportive of others. And we often even go around uh, in our lifestyle trying to make sure that we're approved of till someone else sets a different pace. Well, let, 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 let me expand this a little bit. Now, I asked a question earlier in this program before you came on. Uh, I'm having a problem trying to understand why a sizable amount of people from many different countries, including the United States of America, want to leave the country that is at their birth and go join somebody like the ISIS people and dedicate the rest of their life to killing somebody. Now, I, I guess you could just, you could define it as mob mentality uh, because all these individuals end up in a mob called ISIS. Now, what is the motivating factor that have the Swedes and the Finns and the United States citizens and Mexican citizens want to go and join a group that is dedicated to killing? What's that all about? Well, you know, when we look at someone who does, who deviates from the norm, there's more to it than we realize. People who are not well adjusted, it doesn't mean that they're rational about their decisions. Often people that are not approved of in society or people feel there's a disconnect. And the sad thing is religion. Religion is a factor, a big factor. It's a divide where people kill each other because they're even taught, a lot of these religions, that when they uh, wake up, they read from a certain Bible, a certain book of their own, to hate certain people. And this is how they're brought up. So their religion is a way of life. It's a lifestyle. And these people who join on their own are people who have been involved with these religions as well as feeling a disconnect from their own reality and experience and situations. So it's very scary. Uh, it's something that's very destructive, and it's very sad that religion can kill, and we have wars based on religion. Well, it's been that way for forever. Uh, religion, uh, fights about religion, has been there. In fact, I asked the question, what if we had absolutely no religions, and maybe that'd be less killing, huh? That would be wonderful. We all want the same thing. We all want, you know, freedom of speech and liberty and uh, the ability to succeed and to have good relationships and to be healthy and to believe in something. That's wonderful. But, you know, when you look at it, who are we all looking to believe in? This is someone who is uh, spiritual, someone who has to have a supportive, good feelings for everyone and to direct everyone in the right place, the right way. So we basically, the common denominator 
is the same. That's why this is so sad. I'll share a quick story with you. I'll share a quick story. This reminds me of the question you just asked me. I had this lady that came to work for me, and she was Egyptian. I'm Jewish. And she said to me, those Jews, (laughs) they wouldn't give you anything. They would throw in the garbage before they would give it to you. So I was wondering, with a name like Birnbaum, doesn't she know? But whatever. And she worked for me. And she watched my son for me for years. And she found out I was Jewish. And she said to me, do you want me to leave? And I said, absolutely not. She turned out to be the nicest person. We became the best friends. And isn't that the truth? When you meet each other one-on-one, you see that you're all the same. It's the group mentality, as you said in the beginning, that sets people off. And then there's this divide between one and another. You know, it's interesting. I, I'm glad you mentioned the fact I was going to ask you mm-hmm. whether you were Jewish. Yeah. Uh, I've been to Poland many times. I've, I've been to 60 different countries. And, uh, and on one of my trips to Poland, I went down in the southern part, and I, I went into some of the camps where the gypsies and the Jews were burned in the, in the ovens and things of that nature. And uh, I, it, it was a real chilly experience. I mean, I'm, I'm going to ask you a question uh, and, and see how you answer it. Why is it that the Jews ha- ha- have been persecuted and uh, all, all, all the time? What is it about that? They're the chosen people? Is it jealousy? Well, what is the reason that, that Hitler... Uh, did what he did. And, and, and Talking about you, mindset, group mentality, you know, here's the ultimate group mentality. Isn't it amazing that this man, who, who was he, a painter, can have so yeah, many... He, he was a paper hanger. A paper hanger. Even better. And he had all these people, millions of people following him as if there was a rally. And, he, you know, he, he saw cheerleaders and he said, you know what, I'm going to do the same thing. They had people cheer, and there was this camaraderie and this good, this good feeling, and that's how it really started. But your question is, what is it about the Jews that antagonize other people? So it's not, you know, it's always t- two sides to a story. Uh, did we do something wrong? I don't think so. But what is it about us that creates these negative feelings? Uh, the chosen you people? Want, you want yeah. My answer, and I'm not I'd love to hear it. Well, you know, I lived a long life. Uh, I, 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 a few months ago, I turned 93. Congratulations. So, you, sure, you sure don't sound it, let me tell you. Really? You sound... Well, I, I was in wow. World War II and, and uh, spent three and a half years there, and et cetera, et cetera. But the, the point I'm, I'm making is yes. that I, uh, I, I, I've seen a lot of things happen, you know, mm-hmm. over, the, over the years. I... I, I like Fiddler on the Roof. Do you watch Fiddler on the Roof uh, every few years? Uh, yeah, you know, I saw the play. I think I saw it twice. And it's interesting because it's pretty much the story of my parents' life, leaving and yes. what, yeah, what they went through. And uh, it's true. But, you know, to let people know also that homosexuals, people that were disabled, were also killed, just to be fair-minded about, you know, talking about... Uh, victimization and uh, terrorism and devastation, uh, how something like this could even happen by letting a person uh, take over and being able to feel that you're going to be okay eventually. It didn't happen for many, many years, and it's really um, something for all of us to know that we shouldn't look away. If we see something... (laughs) Am I right? You, you, you know, uh, to finish my story... Go ahead, I'm sorry. Go uh, ahead. First of all, I'll mention in Fiddler on the Roof, I'll, I'll never forget the scene where it, uh, the, the star of the show, he looks up and he says, God, we're the chosen people. Couldn't you have choose somebody else? That's, fu- that's true. I'll never forget that. That's now, true. My, my feeling is that the Jews, by and large, uh, have qualities. I... I 
I wasn't raised by Jews, but I'll tell you, I, I work for them. I speak Yiddish. And oh, wow. Some of the words I use, mm-hmm. I understand, and some I don't. <laughs> I was driving a, a 19, I don't know, uh, it, was a, it was a Buick car. <laughs> mm-hmm. And the, the Jewish man I worked for, his wife was in the back, and and he and I are talking about somebody. And I said something about, you know, putz, putz. <laughs> and mm-hmm. he said, hey, my wife's in the back seat. Don't say that. <laughs> mm-hmm. But anyhow, uh, I think I think the Jews are very capable. They stick together. They they help each other. And they're very successful. I mean, this even goes back to biblical times when, when Jesus drove the money changers out of the temple. Uh, and, and, and I think this is a good thing, that, that they're very capable. So maybe it's just a matter of, you know, if somebody's always beating you out in terms of their successes, and uh, <laughs> you you probably resent this because they're successful. Uh, maybe that's an oversimplification. I, am I missing the mark? No, you're not, but there's something else going on there. You know, because these Jews were shopkeepers, and they were successful. That's where the hatred came from, thinking that if they weren't around, then other people could be part of it, as if they were taking over. But really, it's a mindset. If you believe in education, it's not that anybody's smarter than the other. It's just the way you go about handling your life. So the Jews were very much into the Bible, and to educating themselves um, with history. And their mindset was always uh, trying to make a penny with a penny and keep going. And so they succeeded because of that. And when Hitler got rid of the Jews, uh, was everything better? Did people have more jobs? Did the Jews really take over? But they were known as swindlers, uh, people you couldn't trust, And that was the reputation just because they were doing better. So it's very sad that this happened. I don't even remember your question, but I'm going on into this whole feeling of what it is like to feel prejudiced against, to feel victimized in the black community as well. I really feel for these people because I know what it's like to have a, a, a situation where people don't know that everybody is the same. So they're targeted. And the Jewish people uh, suffered plenty. And they came back, and they survived, and they're doing well. And it's unbelievable. And just to let you know a little bit more about myself, I didn't know anything about this, that my father, my parents went through the Holocaust Till I got married, they didn't want to tell me about it. And I never really thought that such a thing could ever happen. And I've given lectures and speeches about it because it comes down to bullying. Uh, This is the most exaggerated form of bullying. When you put someone down because your self-esteem dwindles because of someone else. And that's what Hitler was all about. His self-esteem was dependent on putting other people down. So we go to, into this theme of bullying. What does that mean? That you have to feel better at somebody else's expense. That's really a very pathetic way to live your life. And on the contrary, we should all lift one another up. Doesn't that feel much better? And the differences, Italian people, yeah. Yeah. You, you, you're absolutely right. At age 93, yes. I had some words that I live by. And uh, they work for me. And that is, every day, every day, if I do two things, I've had a successful day. One is, I have to help somebody. The other one is, I have to learn something. And if every day I learn something, every day I help somebody, I've had a successful day. It works for me. You, you, this is why you are so on top of everything.
because this is what really life is all about. It's about giving. The best feelings, you know, your heart changes its rhythm when you're giving. If you give, you get back double, always, for Absolutely. sure. Yes, for sure. And so, so we're really in a place where it's when you get older, you know what life is all about. A kind word from someone can make you feel much better than having more money, buying that extra new car, uh, whatever that is, even going on vacation, which is nothing, there's nothing wrong with it, but connecting to another human being and feeling that you made a difference, what can be better than that? We That's really, right. we really know, agree on this we, stuff, don't we? <laughs> we? We all, I imagine, yes. uh, come to the point in life where we say, why are we here? Why are we here? What is the purpose of us being here? Well, the only thing I can think of is we're here to help each other. Uh, you know, and, and if we're prosperous, uh, we can help better than if we're not prosperous. Although health is health and it's not always money, you know? Health is so, first. Health is first. But I'm going to say something very simplistic. I'm going to use one okay. word and it's going to sound ridiculously corny. Love. We love one and each other, one another. There wouldn't be these wars. There wouldn't be these, this contempt. There wouldn't be this jealousy which turns into anger and hatred for one another. And I'm talking about in the suburbs. I'm talking about in the inner cities. I'm talking about in the countries all around the world. Just imagine how much toxins would be taken away from us if we could just step everything aside and say, you know what, this person is the same as me. They want the same thing. What difference will it make to me? If they have it, let them have it. Hitler did not know that. Hitler did not know that other people could open up shops, other people could prosper too, and do the same thing. If you work hard, life gets easy. The harder you work, the easier it gets. And that's the, that's the formula. There's nobody that's really lucky out there. No religion. Let me ask you. Yeah. Let me, let me ask you. There are a sizable amount of people that just are maladjusted and they end up by committing suicide, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Why is this? In other words, uh, someplace along the line, they have to have somebody that's a mentor or somebody who cares that can you know, set them on the right track. All successful people, all people who have made it in some way, have had some early mentor, someone they saw. It may, have, may not have been a mother or a father, but something that motivated them. And I think you did say to be productive is what is the motivator in life. To make a difference is what keeps you up in the morning, gets you up, gets you feeling good. You know, depression can be something that can be self-inflicted. Inflicted. If you sense that you're hopeless and you get into that and you give into that, well, guess what? You can get depressed. So you alone can victimize yourself. So you have to be very careful when you get up in the morning. I, I would like to take what you're saying and yes. give you my take on it. Sure. I agree with what you just said. But when, when the, it, it is not the things that come at you that are the problem. It is how you handle the things that come at you. In, in other words, uh, I'll never forget. I had an employee once, in, and I own several stations in St. Louis, Missouri, mm -hmm. and I, 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 this employee was a wonderful employee, but he had a temper, and every once in a while his temper would take over, you know? So I, I loved the man, and... and, and and I, I took him aside one day, and I, I, got to him. I went up to him, and I, I said, Don, that was his name, and I stuck my nose about four inches from his nose. I says, if, if, if you can listen to somebody call you a blankety-blank, blank, blankety-blank, blank, blank, 
And then you say to them, okay, what else do we talk about? I said, then you've arrived. But no, no, if somebody says it to you, you take off and you make it worse. Uh, it's their problem, not yours. If somebody says very bad things about you and messes at you, that's their problem, not yours. Now, does that make any sense? You know, it's true. It's very true. If you put yourself on a path in life, there are all kinds of situations. There are people with their own issues. And you have to know that that experience has nothing to do with you personally. But if you can get back on that healthy path, if you can focus where you're going, then you'll always be all right. When you look to other people for who you are, that's when you get distracted and that's when you get in trouble. So what you're saying, if a lot of people could be listening to this, this could make so much sense in their lives as well. But then again, first you have to know what healthy is. You have to know what the right fit for you is. So if you didn't have the right mentor, if you didn't have the right upbringing, there's always somebody that you'll see and say, you know what, I want to be like this person. There's nothing wrong with you using that as your role model and as your guide. It's always been very interesting. Uh, are, are, yeah. are, you, are you saying that having a role model is pretty much of a necessity? I'm saying you have to have a way to mimic what it is you need. Everybody has to know that there's a certain way to go about doing it. It's not a coincidence that somebody did well. How did they do well? It's interesting that we're talking about this because I always have been interested to know what path, what was their early childhood experiences, who were their mentors, what happened at that moment, what was their turning point, what was the pivotal time in their lives. I'm even talking to a producer, I'm talking to a producer about a show, just interviewing successful people and how they got where they've gotten, for women especially to see, for men to see, and so you're right. There is something there that we need to role model so we can go ahead and do the same thing. It's a manner of looking, investigating, working hard. Nothing happens overnight. Anything that you see that looks easy is usually not. And if you're willing to go ahead and struggle, if you're willing to go ahead and see where you need to go. Not everything can be exactly the same. You can't copy someone else's style. Everybody is different. You have to know your own rhythms. You have to know what it is that would work for you because no one can do that. But once you set yourself on that pace, I would like your listeners to know that they can be that individual they can have that feeling. And to go a step further than that, people often don't even know what they want to be, what they want to do. When you enjoy something, when you're having fun with something, you don't care about how much money you're making, well, guess what? You're going in the right direction. Freedom, uh, it's gonna, I'm going to give the uh, break. It's time for us to do the break. And then when we come back from the break, I, I want to talk about Ferguson and Baltimore and how that relates to mob mentality. So give, give us your take on that after the break, Ferguson, Baltimore, and mob mentality. Absolutely. Take it, Jen. I'll be here. Okay. It's a cry. It's a voice to be heard. Uh, this is a revolutionary time for us. And it starts way back with the family. Families are broken. Uh, where are the men? Half of the households do not have male role models, as we spoke about before. And these young men learn on the streets of what to do, where to go in their lives. And what they're learning is not within their benefit often. So there are a lot of broken homes. 
uh, and we need increased wages and education. And then again, uh, what is going on with the experiences with the policemen? Why are the police officers not more invested in having a relationship with these men? Instead of being enemies, they should really have them as their friends. And I know they're starting to do this more, but still 97% of people born in poverty stay in poverty. 20% uh, of this population is not employed and uh, they make maybe 25000 not maybe for sure, $25,000 or less. It's very hard uh, when you have to worry about putting food on the table not to have stress. And these people also, when they come home, who do they come home to? Uh, one parent, family, who's often working or has issues. Usually it's the female these boys don't identify with. And their mother often has addiction problems that they need uh, help themselves in order for these kids to be okay. And then, of course, there's the infrastructure of uh, the cities. We need to have more businesses, more employment, uh, so they can have pride, so the dignity of these young men can be uplifted. Let, let me ask you, how in the world can the attitude of the average black that rioted in Baltimore and Fergus, how, how can we get them to uh, <laughs> have an attitude of hope, have an attitude that's positive? Because right now, they are, in my opinion, are achieving their self-esteem by doing something that you and I would probably say are unacceptable. How do we get this thing turned around? And I agree with you as far as the police are concerned. I agree with you 100%. It's a, it takes a pretty mature person <laughs> to, uh, to, to be a policeman that, uh, <laughs> that can do that. I, I, I'm not sure that a very large percentage could do that. Well, you know, well, there's a lot to be said. I have a lot to say about this. First of all, when we were talking about my background and my religion, well, my face isn't black, so I'm not going to be targeted in the same way. And these men carry this around with them, and they can't avoid the stigma. So it's very difficult to be a black man in this country. It's uh, it's a uh, something that could be dangerous. It's more than difficult. It's dangerous to be a black man. But let me, let me tell you. Yes. You, 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 you're saying something here that I don't disagree with, but there are people, there are people that are black, they have an education. I, I think the common denominator is an education because you'd be surprised at the opportunities that open up once you have some ability, some education. Uh, we have a president that's half black. The president is half black and half white. So there is your start right there. It's hard to concentrate on your studies if you know you're coming home to problems. It's hard to go to school if you don't have the income, the resources, although now people are being helped with that. It's very hard to go ahead and feel mainstreamed when you have to worry and be stressed. So you're 100% right, but how do we get to that place? We have to help people who can't afford schools. You know, in Europe, college is free. Here, you have to make a fortune in order to pay for this. I mean, my husband put my kids through uh, a PhD, through law school, it's expensive. So people who don't have the income are being told to get educated. Well, guess what? They need the money to get educated. So you're right, but we have to look at a way to do that. Obama did say two years. Two years of tuition will be taken care of for students who are able to maintain a certain grade level. So that's where it starts. Isn't it interesting that the Jews were discriminated for this and the black community needs this. This is their bread and butter. 
This is their investment. So this will give dignity to the black man of this country because being black can be uplifting if you can really represent yourself in the community in the right way because black men and black youths are not thugs. There are people who just need to be heard. They are people that need to have get a chance like everybody else. So when that happens, we will have a different definition because if there's no justice for one, there's no justice for all. Everyone wants to have the same things. Freedom. Yes. Freedom. 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 Uh, when, when, when I did not vote for uh, uh, Obama. Yes. But when he was elected, I thought, here is an opportunity for a man who has black blood, even though it's only half. Yeah. Uh, here, we, we consider him a black man. Right. Uh, not by, de- by definition. That's right. Now, he, I, I think he could have, had he had the right attitude, uh, had he been a little smarter than he is, he could have made all the difference in the world and make it a positive situation for the black people. He he blew it, in my opinion. He ta- he result, blew. He, I'm sorry. Go ahead, because this is go ahead. In, in my opinion, the yeah. blacks are worse off now under a black president than they were before they had a black president. Now, I I, I think the man blew it, and and this makes me very very sad. Now, you probably don't agree, huh? I agree 100% with you. And uh, I was wondering, where is he already? When is he going to speak up? We have a timid president. We need someone. It doesn't matter if it's a woman or man. We need somebody who is assertive, who's out there, who's not afraid of the way they represent themselves, who doesn't second-guess themselves, who is someone who knows what they need to do right away, and we don't have that. Where were the leaders? Where were the leaders before these riots? Why didn't someone come up before? What were they waiting for? What on earth were they waiting for? We're so deficient in leadership right now that I can't wait for someone else to put us in a better place. And hopefully, we're going to find more information about the people that are running. We definitely don't have enough information to make any decisions yet. And hopefully, that that person will say what we want to hear. Because we need to change the way our society is being run. Police officers... Well, you know, you you said something very important. Many things are very important. But one thing. I say to you, shalom, shalom. We need shalom. Yeah. Maybe we should develop love, love. We need love. We need love. Where is that song? <laughs> Whatever that is, we do need love. Maybe that should be our new mantra, our new way of looking at life. We should have a day we, we, for we, love. We, How's we that? Shalom, shalom. We need shalom. Peace. We, we, it could be love, love. We need love. If, if we could just all be a bit more mature. I, I think immaturity enters into this thing. You have to understand what your situation is. In other words, you've got to feel good within your own skin. Do you know what I'm saying? Of course. If you don't feel good within yourself, you're going to find fault in other people. And that's our problem. It starts with us. Start, stop blaming everybody else. We need a day, you know, a day for humanitarian day for everybody to be there, to be supportive. You know how Mother's Day started? Mother's Day started for women who lost their sons during the war about 115 years ago. Well, today, we need to have a special time set apart for people who, who, for Mother's Day, for women who lost their sons on the streets. They didn't go to war. We should have a moment in time on Mother's Day to just remember to celebrate, to be there for these and honor these women. And then again, what you're saying is extremely vital and important. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could set up and represent a cause, humanitarian cause, one day a year to know that everyone deserves justice, 
children that were killed in schools by people of criminal minds, black young men and black middle-aged men or whatever that were killed by police officers that need to be trained to shoot to stop a person, not to shoot to kill a person. What are they doing wrong with these rookie cops that they can't handle themselves? Maybe they should just not be in the force, on the force. Uh, and the police department, maybe they need to take a test with ethics. And if they fail that test, they should not be in the police department. We really need to revamp what's going on. We need to know that it's safe to walk on the streets no matter what color you are and no matter where you live. Lower income people, people in pro poverty, does not equal criminals. It's insane what's going on. So this is a very revolutionary time. And if we can look at this, that the face of our country is changing and going to become softer, that's where we need to go. And you're right. And that's Frida. talking about maturity. Frida, yeah. I, 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 I think education is the answer. Of course. And uh, I, years ago, I... Uh, I had a Ford grant, an adult education Ford grant, and I worked under this grant for two years yeah. uh, developing uh, education for adult education, this sort of thing, did research mm -hmm. on it for the Ford Foundation. Uh, but I think our government schools, some people call them public schools, that's a misnomer. They're not public schools. They, well, I guess they are. But really, they're government schools. Now, I think the government schools are letting the people down because they don't address the whole person. And, and, and as a result, uh, you're kicking people out that, that don't know how to live in a, in, in a capitalistic system. So there is an inequity in our capitalistic system, but that inequity can be overcome with education. And if you develop marketable skills for yourself, there's not an inequity. You see what I'm talking about? You're right. We I don't, don't think. Yes. I don't think our government schools address this. Now, we now have a junior college in, in this community. I donated $180,000 to bring this college in here, uh, along with a lot of other people, because I feel that we need education, and the, the, the less expensive we can make education for our young people, the more they're going to get educated and, and the more, 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 more skilled they're going to be, and, and I think it's a good thing. What, what's your take on that? Uh, yes, you're right, and here's something very interesting. It's not only about a skill, it's about respect. I have a Ph.D. I'm the same person I was before. You're calling me Frida. And people call me Dr. Frida, right? Or Dr. Frida Birnbaum or whatever. But I have the same things to say as I did before. But because I have a PhD, <clears throat> excuse me, I am listened to. I am respected. And the reason of, of that is because when you go for a higher degree, it shows a certain mindset of determination, of investigation, of leadership qualities, of not looking to others for answers, but researching and finding it on your own. I am a research psychologist. So I'm really the same person, but that degree gave me more respect. And as far as schools are concerned, schools need to teach leadership qualities. They teach you, when we're talking about public schools in the lower grades, they teach you how to be a good student. They teach you to memorize, which is baloney. We all forget. I forgot everything I've ever memorized. So if you have a good memory, that's, it's, it's in your favor. But they don't teach you to do critical thinking, to ask questions. I have a little boy who asks a lot of questions. The teacher complained to me. It's not good that he asks so many questions, but the answers are in the questions. So give me a break. We need to change our school system as well to learn to be able to think out of the box, to be able to say something that is not agreed upon and not worried about a stigma and to have someone approve of you 
or a teacher who wants it easier so you should fall into place with the other students. That needs to be changed as well. There's a lot that needs to be looked at as far as education itself is concerned. Uh, Ken, why don't you give out the phone numbers? There might be somebody that has been listening intently to what we're saying and has a question we could uh, ask uh, Dr. Frieda. Sure. Okay, if you give out. All right, 659 and 1-800-447-4463. Frieda, one of the questions I've got right yeah. off the top of my head is that do you feel like that we are slowly regressing back into that time where we're like the turbulent 60s and those type with all the things are going on? Or, or can we pull ourselves out of this? And what is this going to take for us to get ourselves out of this? Well, you're right. We are regressing, but it's different. People are being heard now. They are listening. They are being supported. When you see marchers, you just don't see only black people. You see people of all colors. And that's so heartwarming to see that everybody's in this together. We're joining in. We're feeling the pain. We're connecting. That divide, that racial divide, is not the same. So although there are, there's marching for voices to be heard, things are shifting, and we need to change a court system where we have a people's court where police officers are just not inclusive and they're buddying up with one another and protecting each other from what their actions are that are not often justifiable. So when things change and we're, we're, we're all part of it, we're in this together, that is the changes that, that have been happening slowly, something that is not as obvious to others. But if you look and see what I'm talking about, you'll see that it is different than the 60s. But we still want the same thing. Well, uh, let me ask you a question. In my opinion, I don't think that our present, present president, uh, Mr. Obama, uh, he's not a leader. He is not a leader. How... I don't know whether you agree or not. First of all, do you agree that he's not a leader? We're very disappointed in him. I think oh, that... Okay, that, that's all I want to yeah, hear from Yeah, very disappointed. Now, 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 what on earth, what on earth possessed the 330 million people to elect somebody that was not qualified to be a leader and make them leader of our country. This is idiotic, in my opinion. Do I make any sense? We wanted to have hope. We wanted to support someone that this country has not been supportive of. What he represents, something new, that everyone will have the same chance that everyone will be able to have their needs met. It did not happen. And so, therefore, we need to look on. And here we're looking at a woman president. Maybe it's Hillary, maybe it's not. Who knows? So are we going to, again, want to empower someone that's going to empower others, hopefully? And that is something that's worked against her. Women in general would benefit from having a strong leader in our country. It's been researched. What do you think of Carla Farina, yeah. who, uh, who, who is the CEO of, uh, of uh, the big uh, company? Well, uh, well, for one, I like the fact that Hillary has another woman that's running. So she's not, it's not only Hillary that represents a woman who's running for office. Uh, but it is uh, someone else. So that's refreshing to see. You know, she's coming in. We don't know enough about her. And we need to be careful not to go ahead and vote for the person. But we need to vote for the cause. We need to listen carefully and study what's between the lines of what is being said to us. What will she do for our economy? What will she do for the violence and terrorism around the country? Where is she going with helping people 
to have equality of all genders, of all races, what is she actually going to do? We want to hear the facts. So we have to be careful this time around not to vote for the person. And then we can have some good potential, some good prospects about recession, about our economy that's so vital to our health as well as our well-being. So, you know, the answer to this really is that we need to break these change, these chains of these generational dysfunction and problems that continue. And, you know, women, I hate to say this, have voted for men who are handsome and have charisma. Uh, they find they trust these men more. I mean, something as superficial as that. We need to get beyond that. Do you remember Phyllis Shapley? Yes. She's a good friend of mine, and uh, we had her on as a guest every once in a while. Mm-hmm. Uh, she, she's an interesting person. She's, a, she's certainly a creature of the past, but uh, mm-hmm. we'll see what happens. I, I would like to see Carla uh, for, uh, get to be uh, uh, maybe a vice president or something. I, 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 think, I think it's time for a woman to be up in the executive branch uh, rather high. We now have a woman uh, attorney general, and I'm giving her the benefit of the doubt, and we'll see what happens. Well, uh, okay. I, now, I just want to uh, say one quick thing about that. I have too much to say always. That's yes. my problem. Just one quick thing. Women who have power outside the home, outside the home, have more power in the home, in their relationships, in financial decisions, all across the board. So it really does affect a woman's lifestyle when she has a higher status career and what can be more powerful than being president of the United States. So this would really impact on women making decisions and having equality at home. Well, uh, you know, women have come a long way in the last uh, 30 or 40 or 50 years, you know. I mean... uh, (laughs) I would say 56 years ago was keeping pregnant and barefoot, you know. That's for sure. <laughs> and and now uh, they're you know, they they are a tremendous asset. And I, I was married to a wonderful woman for 55 years. She finally passed away, but uh, uh, absolutely fantastic uh, lady. And uh, I learned a lot from her, and, uh, and she helped me get what whatever success I have. Well, uh, it's about time for us to wrap this okay, up. Okay, it went so uh, fast, my goodness. It felt like a few minutes, to tell you the truth. What, I can't believe it was an hour. Movie? I enjoyed it. What do you think of this movie? I think, you're, I think that uh, you're very stimulating, and so you bring up topics that are uh, very important, controversial, what's going on in our country, that really, if the people listen, uh, could really sort of paint the picture of what's going on. So the topics are very timely. And we're talking about, you know, a perspective of the events in our lives. What can be more important than that? So a lot of issues have come up, a lot about women that needs to be continued to be discussed. I was told to get my MRS, not a PhD. And there was a stigma attached to me when I went to work. Now there's nothing new. So I was always 10 years ahead of my time, but so are you. You're many, many years ahead of your time. And when people listen to these topics, it's going to give them a heads up of what they need to do and where they need to go to hear other people's messages. So it's extremely important. You know, as, as we speak yes. uh, right now, Frida, there are 2 million Americans that are earning their, patch, their bachelor's degree. The bachelor's degree, and you know, during this graduation period, two million. It's know. wonderful. And I got mine many, many years ago. I never pursued it uh, any higher, but I, I compliment you for what you've done. Doesn't matter. Look and, what you're uh, doing to the, the yeah. public. You're giving all this advice, and you're helping people. That's even more important. Let me let me ask you. Yeah. If if, 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 if I made you benevolent dictator for the day. You're a benevolent dictator. What two things would you change in the United States government? What two things would I change in the United States government? Number one. If you were. 
I would look and hear what needs to be done and I would implement it in such a proficient way that it would follow through. I wouldn't talk too much. I wouldn't make too many promises because action is the best thing anyone can say to make changes right away. We're talking about our economy so people can thrive and people can help each other to succeed because you know when the economy does well, that's when we can have all this visionary uh, 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 opportunities about our future. We can go ahead and see how to make changes in the world that could make our society stronger. And I'm talking about technology. I'm talking about our being in space. I'm talking about all kinds of environmental issues when we have opportunities to think away from ourselves. But when we're in the midst of worrying about a recession, about our economy, we can't expand our horizons. We can't move forward. We can't grow. We're stuck. And we can grow. We, we live in an age of technology right now. And that's what we need to keep furthering for our generation the younger generations, our children's children, that would make all the difference. The second thing I would do is to say to listen to one another. Listen to each other's stories. Hear where you're coming from and understand what the issues are. So this hatred and terrorism and killings of one another will be resolved instead to understand what the issues are and work on those issues, but not to worry about what you're getting, but think about what the other person needs and understand why they need that to help that. Because as, as I said, when you give, you get back double. And those are the two vital things that I would say we need to do to stop terrorism, to stop the fear that we have for one another, and to allow our country to grow in this age of technology. Those are the two vital things we need to do. Education well, will come. Talk, yes. It's been, it's been a pleasure talking with you. We're running out of time right now. I want to I want to end with the, what I say, and I talk to people all over the world on a daily basis. Shalom, shalom. We need shalom now because of you. It's love, love. We need love. Okay? Everywhere we go, we need love. Thank you. Thank you. Really, thanks much for giving it's me been wonderful. Time. I really had fun with you. Thanks a lot. All right. Bye Thank bye. you very much. It's been bye. a pleasure. My pleasure, for sure. Bye-bye. Okay.